Hi, this is Niels on Dynasty. Please like, share, and subscribe. Buy some silver and some platinum and some crystallized osmium because, well, it would suck not having any when it goes up in price. And uh, be kind, helpful, and grateful because it's better than being a jerk. I'm kind, helpful, and grateful and bringing you guys this information about, well, not silver because everyone does silver, but platinum and crystallized osmium because of the opportunities that they present at this current time in space. But that's not what this is about. This is about a proxy fight for Africa. Mm. This didn't explain. It is from the new tourist. Ooh, bet you guys haven't watched them. It's about two hours ago. This is what the West are plotting against Ibrahim Teru. Triru, excuse me. Yeah, okay. That's their version of it. Distanced himself from France and other Western countries. Trare has often mentioned on several occasions that as long as Burkina Faso does not have an imperialistic mindset, there is no problem, adding that France was ineffective in helping the country fight a long-running anti-jihadist insurgency. I'm just saying if you're paying attention. The West is not happy that Trare is trying to make his country 100% independent and free from Western predators. Burkina Faso is a former French colony that long relied on the support of French troops to fight their enemies. But after many failed coups against him, Captain Traoré pledged to sever all ties with France, seen as a colonial power that failed to contain extremists. In today's video, we will be telling you how the West has been trying to tarnish Traoré's image because of his stance. Before we ride on, hit the like button and subscribe to the new tourist channel. Community. Many Pan-Africanists like Patrice Lumumba, Muammar Gaddafi, and Thomas Sankara were assassinated because they wanted <laughs> to see the continent autonomous and free from the shackles of colonialism. Their main concerns were geared at making Africa economically and socio-politically fit to function without any Western intervention. Their ideas and moves posed a big challenge to Western influence, and they were often threatened even before their demise. Now the West is behind Ibrahim Traoré because of the same problem. Traoré is following the footsteps of his predecessor, Thomas Sankara, the Marxist revolutionary who ruled Burkina Faso in the 1980s. Sankara worked ceaselessly to make his country independent and free from Western domination, just like Traoré is doing right now. At the age of 35, Traoré is the youngest president in the world and is currently building the first gold refinery in Burkina Faso. He has worked endlessly to preserve Burkin Bay resources from refiners. <coughs> According to him, the West should be made to pay the fair market values for these natural resources, which will help Burkina Faso put itself out of poverty and become truly independent. The West doesn't want this. They want to keep Burkina Faso under their thumb and continue running her policies. A recent military coup in Burkina Faso was thwarted in January, and France, UK, and the US certainly planned it to stop the wind of freedom blowing around Africa. How long shall they terminate promising leaders in Africa? When Traoré was sworn in as president, he expelled all the French forces from Burkina Faso. Okay, I, I, I got to stop it right there. They're saying, how long will the West be allowed to assassinate a la uh, leaders? Well, as long as Russia allows it to happen, there's two sides to every coin. Why has Ibrahim been able to stop three coups against him? The same as the, as well, not the same, because he was backed by Russia, so he was successful. And that's why he was able to stop three other coups. Not saying that the West didn't do it, but I am saying the East has their own agenda. So, yeah, you know, hate, whatever, whatever, whatever. But realize there's two sides of the coin. I totally agree. Yeah, the, the France was raping that area of the world, uh, as was most other countries. And it was being done because of deeper issues. Basically, the, the main issue of why it's done is because Africa is not united in their tribal format that they governed themselves in for millennia. They were given boundaries and borders that they had to follow, which cut tribes in half, made friends of enemies, made enemies of friends, all because of borders, boundaries, and country lines. And then 
the Africans themselves sold out, bought into it, and became political leaders of these new countries rather than fighting it way back then to try and keep it tribal. My 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 uh, pres- precedence for that statement is Burkini, Burkina Fasco, Mali, and Niger are thinking about becoming one country because they're all one tribe. They're the Junta. And the, the, and, and the boundaries that were put on them by others, Russia probably had something to do with it as well because they, they had their hands in Africa. Every time America had their hands in it, Russia has their hands in it. So you're hearing one side of the story being given up from a perspective that's unaware of the other side of the story. And that can throw you off financially on your economic uh, investments because you don't see what's happening. Uh, the president, Ibrahim Traro, the youngest pres- president in the world, has only not been assassinated because Russia has stopped it. That means Russia has spent time, energy, and money into keeping it the way it's going now. So it's obviously going to be more beneficial to them than to us. So they're still being used as a chess piece. But I'm curious as to see how far Russia is going to take this. Because in the forming of Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso into one nation, they are not part of BRICS. And when they do that, their GDP will far go by Nigeria's and South Africa's, making them the, the, the economic leader of Africa. And since South Africa's mines are falling apart and their country's falling apart, they won't be leading the continent of Africa for long. So there's a dynamic shift going on that I see. And on the political level in the next five years, we'll see a dynamic shift to where the power of the African continent shifts to the central West countries or the new country for whatever they're going to call it when Burkina Fasco, Mali, and Niger form one country because that GDP will, will, will be the biggest in Africa. And if, they've, if they're getting a nuclear power plant, they're building their own gold refinery. Oh, that's going to affect Fortuna Silver Mines. They better get in there with some good negotiators because they've got a contract in Mali for which will be part of the country of Mali, Burkina Fasco, and Niger. And they're all having to redo all their contracts right now. So uh, you got to keep the geopolitical in mind when doing investments, even in PMs, uh, most especially in PMs. Let's get back to the story. Also for sponsoring terrorism and causing instability. He removed French as an official language and adopted local languages. Ibrahim Traoré has survived seven assassination attempts from 2023 till now, reportedly orchestrated by the West, the latest being that of February 2024. My bad. I thought they only tried three times, not seven. It was allegedly reported that some soldiers and activists in the country who were involved had received funding for one of the attempts. The coup attempts against Traoré and his rulers have been thwarted severally by the country's intelligence and security services, and these express failed Western plans. Burkina Faso's military rulers say foreign officers and others had planned to seize... Just to reiterate my point that Russia is helping them, that intelligence force that he had that stopped the seven coups against him is the same intelligence force that was there when he did his coup. Hmm. You know, just food for thought. His power and plunged the country into chaos. <clears throat> Many people in and out of Africa have used their social media platforms to denounce the tarnishing of Ibrahim Traoré's image by the Western states. Traoré sought to form a coalition with Mali and Niger as part of a long-term goal of uniting the West African neighbors within a federation. In mid-September, it's actually going to go farther than a federation. They're looking at becoming a country. September last year, the military leaders of these countries signed a defense pact. Some pro-French media operating in so were suspended for trying to tarnish the image of the ruling military regime. Many of them reported that there was discontentment and tension within the armed forces, and this turned out to be untruthful. France does not want to let Burkina Faso be alone. Bear in mind that violence has also surged under Traoré's rule. In fact, Burkina Faso has become a focus of the crisis in the Sahel region, an enormous swath of land that has been shaken by extremist uprisings and military coups. 
The West is using the UN and other aid agencies as references for their propaganda. Note that in December, Traoré expelled Barbara Manzi, a top UN official in the country, asking her to leave immediately. Foreign Minister Olivia Rwamba said on state television that Manzi had raised the alarm about insecurity in the capital, Ouagadougou, without presenting any proof, even though the proclamation requesting her removal did not provide a reason. Local and international aid groups have accused both the extremists and government-affiliated forces of terminating civilians in Burkina Faso. Last year, the U.S. Department mentioned in a statement that it was concerned about actions by Burkina Faso's military government, such as the growing use of targeted force conscriptions, shrinking civic space, and restrictions on political parties. It went further by saying that these actions have the cumulative effect of silencing individuals who are working on behalf of their country to promote democratic governance. Cases of Burkina Bay civilians picked up and forced to join Western nations against their motherland have been recorded. Human rights activists, Razmin Zinaba and Bazaru Bajo, and journalist Isaka Lingani, who were spotted last December, received a positive judgment from a court in the capital city, Ouagadougou. The court sided with them, stating that the orders were illegal. Despite the ruling, the three remain in hiding, fearing for their lives. Burkina Faso is one of the growing numbers of West African countries where the military has seized power. Okay, um, just that little bit of the story with all the unrest that you're now hearing about from this guy. I kind of like this channel. Uh, he's given a real good in-depth look at this. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of people dying right now. And uh, for everyone who hates the West, who lives in the West, who says we're the problem for everything, what the TV is not showing you is the other side of the story. And there's as much death and as much misery. The outcome of all that will be the same outcome as what happened in the Philippines when the last president said, or the, I don't know if it's the president they have now or the last president uh, basically uh, said, hey, uh, we don't want you guys talking about human rights abuse as long as you're running America as fucked up as you're running it. And they kicked out all our journalists and all this other stuff. And there was no reports on what was going on. They were cleansing themselves of Islamic extremists at that time. And that's why no newspapers reported it. So the same thing will happen here. The fact that they kicked the UN out is awesome because it seems like the UN is a real big sponsor of uh, uh, terror-like activities uh, by what I see is what, what what they've done with the Hamas and Israel and the supporting of them making bunkers underneath their buildings and schools and hospitals and not, not you know, condemning them for war crimes when if any country did that other than an extremist country, uh, we'd be prosecuted in, in for war crimes under in, in international laws because you don't use, uh, you don't build military bases underneath hospitals and schools. So, um, you know, the UN's not doing anything there. These guys here in Africa have made claims that the UN's actually sponsoring the terror organizations that are causing their pro country's problems, which I kind of sort of tend to agree with, and that's why they kicked them out. But Russia has a lot of the same things going on as America does. They have what's called Wagner Group. We have the other private military. Uh, UN has their little private military. And they all do bad things to, to get the agenda to the end game. Uh, I'm interested in seeing what Russia's end game is with this country because Russia is part of BRICS and they have not yet pushed for these guys to join BRICS, even though it is clear beyond a shadow of a doubt that Russia is helping this gentleman stay alive because you do not survive seven coup attempts with the a brand new government of young people who have no contacts and no intelligence and uh, it network intelligence network built up big enough <clears throat> to stop all seven coups you have to have outside help and since it's apparent that at least visually not that it's not happening it might be happening but visually it doesn't seem as the west is helping him although we are running an oil pipeline through their country so it's possible we might be helping them on the lowdown uh, it seems like it's Russia and the Russian intelligence service that's keeping this gentleman alive and in power. And that is what is of interest to me because Russia is in BRICS. And if, if Russia is helping Burkina Faso, Mali, 
and Niger stay sovereign away from Western powers and then create their own little power or possibly even country, maybe they'll court them to join BRICS then as soon as South Africa falls and Niger falls. But that's the future. Let's get back to the rest of the story. Sorry, I didn't do that as good as the uh, Paul Harvey. Many Burkina Bay have welcomed Traoré's security pledge with great enthusiasm. The streets of Ouagadougou have been decorated with Russian flags, alongside banners with patriotic messages prescribed on them. <laughs> Russian flags. Well, there you go. There you go. That proves my point. If Traoré should be the cause of violence, it is for the good of his people. Though the West argues that violence will only make people more frustrated and want to join terrorist groups. They are struggling to tarnish Traoré's image at all cost. In an interview broadcast with some media against a background of tension with France, Traoré highlighted that his country, Burkina Faso, is not the enemy of the French people, but of their policies. France withdrew troops from its former colonies in the face of mounting hostility after Captain Traoré seized power in September 2022, making him the world's youngest leader outside of royalty. I want to give you this. His arrival has sparked great hopes among the people, faced with a tense security problem that his predecessor, Paul Henry Danaba, couldn't deal with till the end. He has actively sought international support, bolstering partnerships with regional forces and engaging in diplomatic efforts to address the root causes of instability. In a positive move, Burkina Faso received the first shipment of cutting-edge weapons under its new strategic equipment plan, a development that indicates a major improvement in its military capabilities. The freshly acquired arsenal was unveiled on January 12th, with President Captain Ibrahim Traoré presiding over the ceremony. He met Russian President Vladimir Putin at the Russia-Africa Summit in St. Petersburg in July 2023, and they discussed development and cooperation. Nuclear power the government plan. has continued to seek a foreign alliance with Russia leading to speculation that the Kremlin-backed Wagner Group could start operating in the country. He has even built... Bachingo, I mentioned the Wagner Group wasn't allowed to work in that area. It's a private Russian military. Now, apparently, they're looking to move in. How peculiar. ...building a nuclear plant in conjunction with <laughs> Russia. African and French observers say that faced with troubles, France is finally shedding its post-colonial tradition of Frank a Freak, a term that smacks of paternalistic influence and quiet deal-making amongst elites as its economic and political powers decline. An increasingly self-confident Africa looks elsewhere. Traoré advocates for African heads of state to stop being manipulated by imperialists, claiming that the continent can prosper by leveraging its abundant natural resources to build a more vibrant continent. Given Traoré's commitment to make Africa largely independent and less reliant on foreign aid, speculations insist that some of these inspirations could be triggered by the West. Traoré stands as a great leader that no one dares to deal with, in addition to his close relationship with Putin. Anyone who tries to put him down will face the consequences from Russia. He values Burkina Faso's development greatly. The realities of the job being done on the ground make it quite evident how much progress has been made. The roads were formerly hazardous, narrow, and in poor condition. But because of Captain Ibrahim Traoré's dedication, this reality has undergone a significant adjustment. Presidents Nana Akufo Addo of Ghana, William Rudo of Kenya, Paul Kagame of Rwanda, and Yoru Musvini of Uganda are other African leaders who have received threats from the West over the years due to their non-acceptance of pro-Western cultures and identities. Their political agenda is character. Uh, <laughs> that's going on right now because uh, Biden, uh, he wants them to uh, accept transsexual and all this other crap where he's denying them AIDS. And I believe the president of Ghana told him to get fucked. And they kicked Kamala Harris, who was there to bring him that message. They laughed at her and said, yeah, I think I did a report on that, actually. <laughs> or if I didn't, I damn sure should have because I saw it. Uh, they laughed at her, basically laughed her out of the country. And they said, uh, no, in our way of living, if you're, you know, bisexual, gay or transsexual, uh, you don't belong here. And that's their right because they're a free country separate from our elitist 
that think they can throw money at things and make people change their lives for their own personal beliefs. That's a, you know, God is a free country. If they don't like homosexuality and, and bisexuality and all this other stuff, that's their right. If you try and force it on them, you're the asshole. And right now America's trying to force that on them. And quite frankly, I'm a hundred percent behind Ghana on that. Cause I don't, I, I am not at all behind uh, demoralizing our nation because that is the long-term goal of those who want to conquer our nation. Uh, but that's another subject. I'm not even going to get back to this. This, this video has gone too long. I'm going to give you a picture of this guy and then I'm going to say, good day, sir.